Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so some of you will have heard me talk about this project before, but hopefully I've got some updates on uh, our latest progress. So our project really is looking at this fundamentally uh, important period in, in, in Scottish and indeed uh, European history when you begin to get the emergence of these first uh, kingdoms. Uh, and Northern Picts is looking at uh, uh, the Pictish kingdoms of eastern and northern uh, Scotland. So first mentioned in late Roman sources in, in the third century uh, and always presumed to be um, a, an example of political consolidation in the face of uh, a Roman threat. Um, so uh, fewer uh, and fewer identities referenced in, in the late Roman sources uh, through time. Um, but there's always been a big debate about whether that's the, whether that's the case or not. Um, and our project is also focusing on uh, northern, northern Pickland, which hadn't really came into the fore until um, the mid-2000s, really, with the identification that uh, the most powerful uh, Pictish kingdom, for Chu, was located up in the Murray Firth uh, uh, region. Uh, and the archaeology really uh, emphasised the importance of this area as well. So the iconic Pictish symbol stones very much concentrated in northern uh, Scotland. <clears throat> uh, and so our project's been looking at lots of different elements of uh, Pictish society, um, but I'm going to highlight two elements today that we've really been focusing on in terms of trying to pin down uh, a better chronology and a better understanding of what these sites are all about. Uh, and one is uh, fortified uh, settlements, things like uh, promontory forts, <coughs> and also these this kind of iconic element of, of the Picts, their, their symbol stones, their carved stone monuments, which you can certainly see are probably linked to high status identities, uh, judging by some of the later examples that show probably throned individuals, uh, people on horseback, and other trappings of authority, metalworking uh, down, down here. Um, and so our project is focusing on, on two main areas, uh, the likely area of, of Fortru, extending from modern, modern day Murray up to Easter Ross, uh, and also this uh, area uh, known as, known as Kay, uh, the extent of, of uh, modern-day Aberdeenshire uh, or equivalent. Uh, so we've been looking at lots of different sites um, across this area, um, but I'll only tell you about a few uh, today. Um, our first site uh, is uh, this site down here, Dunacair, uh, a sea stack site which we've been working on since uh, 2015. Um, very... Uh, um, Interesting place name, Dunacare, Fort of the Forts, um, and today uh, a bit of a challenge to get to. It's just around the corner in, uh, in the next bay from uh, Dunotter Castle, probably reference in uh, the seventh century, the siege of Dunfotter. So likely to be an important area for for the Picts. Um, and Dunacare itself is is known for the uh, for being the fine spot of, of five symbol stones, at least five. It's only five that are surviving today. Um, and these were found on the stack in the 1830s by a bunch of youths from the, the local village who got talking to the local grave digger about there being gold buried on top of the stack. Um, but they didn't find any gold, but they did find uh, the carved stone monuments. Uh, and it was in decades, the decades later that people began to uh, become more interested in these, in these monuments. But very few people had been up to the location the location, the fine spot, uh, since the 1830s. Uh, but using uh, a local uh, mountain climber, uh, we uh, ascended onto the top in 2015. Um, and this is what you find on top, uh, not much uh, remaining uh, today. Um, but you can see that you know, we've got very extensive uh, erosion here. So this may well have been a much bigger site um, back in the, in the Pictish period. And it could well have been joined to the mainland as well. Uh, and what did we find? Well, essentially we found what the, the youth found in the 1830s who reported finding a, a low stone wall around the edge of the sea stack. Uh, and what we think we have here is essentially uh, a promontory fort with uh, um, a, a rampart on the outside, a stone and timber um, a rampart on, on the, the uh, uh, seaward uh, sides. Um, with uh, facing stones here and foundation trenches for timber beams. Uh, and then fantastic evidence uh, last year 
uh, for settlement actually on uh, the uh, current stack uh, or what survives the stack. So you can see these, these dark layers here, floor layers, stone built hearths, this one replacing an earlier stone built hearth here. Uh, so amazing evidence really uh, considering the location of this uh, site. And then down in what we romantically called the lower terrace, more evidence for occupation, very thick floor layers, uh, amazing, right on the edge here with different layers of, of hearth. So this hearth was on top of this lower one here, uh, and this one here had a, a sharpening stone for sharpening uh, blades. Uh, and you can see the, the, the charcoal being raked out of the hearth here. So amazing evidence for a, for a, uh, a lowland picture site in terms of uh, settlement evidence. Uh, and then uh, fantastic uh, uh, artifacts came out last year that uh, Gemma Cruikshanks has been looking at, uh, burnishing stones for, for metalworking. Uh, and also uh, some uh, Samian pottery and a few other Roman uh, imports as well. And Samian, incredibly rare in northeast Scotland, so there's only about 10, 10 pieces known from the whole of, all of the northeast. Um, and really the most surprising element of the site w was the, the radiocarbon dates. So I had imagined that uh, once we began to get the evidence from there, before we had the artifacts, so that this was likely to be 5th or 6th centuries AD, uh, 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 tying in with the majority of uh, uh, Pictish um, fortified settlements we know. But we can see that this actually dates to the 3rd and 4th centuries, so in that late Roman context. And exactly the time period that uh, uh, the Romans first start mentioning the Picts um, as sea raiders. And, you know, what more appropriate sites can you have for that kind of activity than this uh, uh, fantastic um, promontory uh, uh, settlement? So perhaps giving us a glimpse of the origins of these more hierarchical societies and, and perhaps also the origins of this uh, symbolic system, this form of writing that um, almost certainly would have helped bolster some of the elite identities in this time period. Um, second site is uh, Araini, which we've been working on since 2011. Uh, it's a longer term project so far. Uh, and it's got this fantastic place name uh, associated with a great king, it's a bit of a clue here, uh, and our project over the last two years has been uh, funded by Historic Environment Scotland. Um, again, fine spot of a whole series of, of symbol stones, much more accomplished, larger monuments than you can see at Dunnock Air, suggesting they might be later in the sequence, um, and famous for uh, the Rhiney Man. Uh, and one of these stones, Crossdain, stands in association with this crop mark complex which we've uh, really um, began to uncover through a kind of strip and map evaluation uh, exercise uh, over the last uh, five years, um, showing that uh, the cross stain stands uh, at the entranceway into a very elaborate um, fortified complex with ditches, um, an outer palisade and a post setting uh, using huge oak planks and then buildings inside rectangular uh, and bag-shaped buildings inside. Uh, and we just recently, um, again, I had uh, uh, Historic Environment uh, Scotland funding uh, for uh, some reconstruction drawings and, and videos, uh, which you can watch online. Uh, it's fantastic, uh, produced by Alice Watterson and her team showing uh, the settlement uh, here at Rhiney. Uh, and then also um, in 2013-14, we did some work down by the village showing that we have a contemporary uh, cemetery um, extending down towards the uh, modern village. <clears throat> uh, and then the status of the site very much emphasised by the imports. So we have um, uh, pottery coming from the Eastern Mediterranean, glass from uh, France, uh, and lots of uh, high status metalwork, dress accessories uh, and the like. Uh, more unusual objects like the axe shaped pin with the <coughs> serpent biting onto the top of the axe here. Uh, very much like what the Rhiney man uh, carries. Um, but just like to update you on what uh, we did last summer in our 2016 season, again evaluating uh, through large trenches but sampling very small amounts of deposits. Um, and this is our trenches from last summer uh, with the hill fort or tapping off in the background here. Uh, and some great results. <clears throat> so right next to the cross stain, we can now, now show that there's actually a building standing here, which you can maybe just make out. It's a, it's a kind of oval or bag-shaped building with post settings inside. 
uh, and this building uh, opens out to the cross stain, so the cross stain is actually standing uh, at the front door of this building. <coughs> More nice finds, um, glass from Anglo-Saxon England, uh, great detail in the outer palisade showing planks and posts. Um, so we're really beginning to put a, a great, great detail uh, in terms of the architecture uh, of the site. And then last summer was really our, uh, where, <laughs> where things went a bit mental in terms of our number of finds um, and the kind of uh, character of the deposits we're finding. So this was one afternoon uh, in August last year where over a course of about two hours we had something like 90 metalworking moulds turn up uh, in a single deposit. So these are dumps of workshop um, debris from <coughs> metalworking uh, activities. So this is us mapping all, all the deposits here. And it includes things like uh, complete crucibles, uh, moulds for brooches, uh, hand pins, uh, other types of pins, axe type objects, um, and then also things like uh, the stands for crucibles. So this is uh, where you're holding your, your crucibles and you can see all the metalworking residues on them, incredible. Uh, ingot moulds, uh, so they're actually producing the, the raw materials, the, the bars of of bronze or silver for, for trade. Uh, and then, most excitingly, um, moulds, zoomorphic moulds of animals. Um, and we've got about five or six of these uh, that, are, that haven't been served yet. So this is pre-conservation. But you can hopefully just make out the head, uh, the front leg, the back leg, and the tail of some sort of hound or beast. Uh, and it shows uh, animals that are very similar to what you find on picture symbol stones. So that's the beauty of Rhinies. We're beginning to find objects and evidence for the production of objects of the type that you actually see on the symbol stones. So we're beginning to link uh, these stone monuments to their actual uh, social context. <coughs> Other moulds, this is perhaps a, a mould for a serpent with an eye and a snout here and the body, very similar to the axe pin here. And then also other objects that tell you about the kind of people who were um, living and uh, occupying uh, these uh, 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 buildings and, and complex at Rhiney. So we've got a, a pommel for a sword here, very, very unusual. And we also have a small dagger as well that looks like it's got inlaid deco decoration, which again is under uh, conservation. So that's Rhiney. Uh, we're back again this summer. Um, but right uh, in the last few weeks, um, we've also been looking at uh, um, Burg Head, uh, which is the largest uh, Pictish uh, fort known uh, up on the Murray coast, a very good uh, uh, candidate for one of the key royal sites of, of, of Fortru. Um, but there's always been a perception, really, that, that there's not much left here apart from the ramparts of this uh, promontory fort. So you can see slightly larger scale than Dunacair. Um, so this is a, a bit later in date uh, and really under lines the, the power of some of these northern Pictish uh, uh, communities. Uh, so you can maybe just make out the ramparts here, a lower citadel here, um, and the, the later town of Burghead destroying a very significant part of, of the fort. Uh, and as I say, a, a, an assumption that there's very little remaining uh, in the garden. So over the last few years we've been um, digging in the Coast Guard Station uh, gardens here just to test to see if there are actually any in, uh, internal structures or remains left. Uh, and what do we find? Well, we found literally wheelbarrows worth of 19th century rubbish. <laughs> Midden deposits spread over the fort, uh, lots of disturbance by later activity. But underneath all those layers, you do have in situ deposits. So last year, uh, we had a floor layer, which you can maybe just make out the, the edges of some sort of rectangular building that looked like here. And so this year, our trench was located here to try and get the other side of that uh, uh, structure. Um, and we got some very tantalizing results last year uh, in terms of uh, features from the 6th and 7th centuries, um, but also um, indications of really quite late activity into the 9th and 10th centuries. So maybe towards the end of the use of this fort and towards the end of the references to uh, Pictish uh, society in in, in Scotland, uh, and we had a fragment of an Anglo-Saxon coin of King Alfred, so late 9th century coin, from an animal bone midden 
uh, from our 2015 uh, excavations. And animal bone midden is absolutely full of cat cattle bone. Uh, so this, <laughs> over the last uh, two and a half weeks, uh, we opened a trench just to the north of uh, last year's trench. Uh, and again, you can see the kind of scale of deposits here. It's like an urban site. It's incredible. So there's uh, later buildings. I'm not quite sure what date these are. Big sunken floor buildings, later walls that cut through the uh, Pictish phases. Uh, and then you can maybe just make a, a stone-built hearth here, very large hearth. And then this is a curving wall. This is the end wall of that building that we discovered in 2015. And it looks like it's a, a turf wall. Um, uh, containing um, the, the hearth and various other features inside. Uh, and just um, last week, um, some <laughs> very nice dating evidence from this building. It's almost as if they knew we were coming to try and date this uh, structure. So from the floor layer of that building, right next to the hearth, uh, we got another Anglo-Saxon coin, uh, again of King Alfred. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's only three Alfred coins from Scotland. Uh, we found two at Burghead, another one was found at Burghead in, in the 19th century, now lost. And you can see it's been pierced for wearing. So what do you do in a non-monetary economy? You actually wear, literally wear your wealth uh, here. So absolutely uh, uh, fantastic. So I'm not going to go on anymore, um, but if you want to know more about the project, we have a little display at the Tarbert Discovery Centre, uh, which we have uh, annual uh, exhibitions. You can catch up on our progress there, see, see some of the artefacts from Dunnacare and Burghead and, and Rhiney too. Um, and I would just like to thank our, our funders, uh, HES, the universities, and also our local community group, uh, Rhiney Women, who really um, support us in so many ways and <coughs> put on these uh, <coughs> excuse me, fantastic uh, displays like this light show of, of Rhiney Man on Tappanoth. So thank you very much for, for listening.